uh, in the previous video we had our introdu uh, introduction and we said our first topic is going to be forces so let's start on that one forces uh, forces there are um, basically three types of forces there are basically three types of forces we have the first type the forces of attraction of the forces of attraction The main, the main, main force of attraction is gravity. As you all know, gravity is the main force of attraction. Gravity is due to the, the presence of a mass. If there is a mass close to a body, let's say there is Earth here, yeah, and then there is another, let's say an asteroid here. Yeah. Due to the presence of this Earth here, yeah, due to the presence of Earth, this asteroid will, uh, will experience a force called gravity because of the mass of the earth the gra gravitational attraction on your body is called its weight so the, the the force the force the force of gravity on this body is called is called weight usually represented by the letter w so the the name of the force is weight weight is the name of the force its effect is seen when an object falls or when an object is held imagine imagine you are on earth on earth if you're holding as if you're holding something heavy you, okay you actually say it's heavy because of the effect of weight an object is heavy because of the effect of of, of weight it, 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 it is being attracted towards the ground that's why it's heavy when you hold an object like this in your hand it feels heavy because of the effect of of this force called weight even when you when you throw something I'm throwing the, I'm going to leave this pen it, it, it falls to the ground that is an effect of of weight an object an object falls to the ground um let's another 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 type of force let's see another type of force um yeah contact forces contact forces these are um, as the name suggests forces due to contact as you can see these forces of attraction the object doesn't have to be in contact with the body this would be earth here yeah? but weight exists even if they are not in contact but these ones here they exist only when things are in contact when objects are in contact let's take for example a book resting on top of a table a book resting on top of a table Obviously, the, it has weight because it is in the gravitational field of Earth. Everything that is in the gravitational field of, of an object experiences weight. Even when you're on the moon, you experience, you experience weight on the moon because you are in a gravita gravitational field of the moon. So let's say, let, let, let's, just say, let's just say this is the moon. If this is the moon, right? If this is the moon, it will have a gravitational field. Let me just let me just be um, layman about this. Let's say this is the gravitational field. Here, there's no more gravitational field. When you're standing here, you will not experience gravity. You will not experience weight because you are outside the gravitational field. But when you are inside here, you experience weight because you are now inside the gravitational field. So this book, this book that is on top of a table, it will automatically experience weight because the table is inside the earth's gravitational field this book is located inside the gravitational field of earth so it automatically has weight but also there's now a second type of force called um okay a second type uh, contact forces the contact because the book is in contact with the table there is a contact force called the reaction or normal force so n n now this is what is happening when you are considering the book, let's consider the book. The book has weight which is facing downwards because the, the weight always faces towards, towards um, the body that is causing the gravitational field. So the weight is facing towards Earth. But the contact, the contact force that is due to this part here where the book is contacting the table faces upwards. It faces upwards because it's due to this contact that is there between the book and the table so the force exerted upwards on the book due to uh, uh, by the surface is called uh, it's a contact force called normal reaction it's called a normal reaction 
Some people just call it a reaction, put an R, or some people put an N. This is the name, it's called a normal reaction. Reaction X in a direction which is perpendicular to the surface. So this is very important. That, that point is very important. It X in a direction that is perpendicular to the surface of contact. Can you see this X at 90 degrees? Why I'm saying it's important, imagine on an inclined plane like this, and then we put a, our book like that. Weight X vertically downwards. Towards what? Towards the ground. It X vertically downwards. It's an inclined plane. So obviously the ground will be somewhere down here. So weight X vertically downwards like that. But reaction, the direction of reaction force will always be in such a way that it maintains the 90 degree angle. It maintains 90 degrees with the surface, with the contact surface. It's contacting here. Yeah. So it, it maintains 90 degrees with the contact like this. It has to maintain 90 degrees with the contact. So the reaction in this case will be facing that side and the weight will be facing down like that. In this case when it's horizontal, it maintains the 90 degrees and weight maintains its downward direction. So that is what that is the, that is um, a contact force. To to give you another example of contact forces, let's let's just expand. Let's just let's just expand on this one that we had. Another example will be. Let's let's take our book and add another contact force. We said we have our weight due to gravity, our reaction force due to the contact of the book and the surface. But we, all, we, we can start pushing this book. When you put your hand here to push this book, that is a contact force. So this pushing force is a contact force. Or let's say this, this is a block. This is a block, a stone block. It will be difficult for you to push it alone. So you call your friend. And you'll be like, no, John, help me, pull, pull, help me, help me move this block. And then John will pull it. When he's pulling, there is a contact force when he is also pulling. And, also, and there are other forces that will, that, that will be due to the contact. So we have push. So as the block is moving this side, let's say this is, this is, this is in a tired road. In a tired road, obviously, there is something called friction. So friction occurs in this direction because, as you know, friction opposes motion. Friction is a force that opposes motion. If I'm moving to the right, friction will be facing the left because it's, it wants to oppose my motion to the right. So can you see here, yeah, this block is moving to the right, so friction will face that side because it doesn't, it doesn't want this block to move. Friction wants to stop this block, and friction is represented by the letter F, or I'll be representing friction by the letter F. So you see, these are contact. These are all contact forces. When I'm pushing, there's a contact here. When someone's pulling the string, we have a contact there. So there will be a special type of, of, of contact force. And when there's a reaction, the reaction, the reaction force is due to the contact of the book and this this table. The weight, the weight we all know it's inside a what? A gravitational field. So it will have a weight. And friction, friction is present always when there's what? When there is, it's, it's not it's not exactly present always. But whenever this surface is not smooth, not a smooth surface, sometimes you'll be told that you're pulling something on a smooth surface. When, it, when the surface is smooth, there will be no friction. There will be no friction. But in reality, it's difficult to achieve that, to achieve a smooth surface. So usually there's friction, but, but you know questions in an exam or in a test, they give you, they give you maybe ideal, solution, ideal situations or hypothetical situations where maybe they will tell you that the surface is smooth. When they tell you that the surface is smooth, is smooth there won't be any friction. So this force just disappears. But when it's not a smooth surface, the friction will oppose motion. If I was, if I was, if this block was moving to the left, friction would be facing right. If this if this block is moving to the right, friction faces the left hand side. Let's move on to the to the other type of to the other type of the, the third type C. The third type of force is forces due to attachment. Forces of attachment. Attach. Forces of attachment. Okay, we can now consider something like um, 
let's say you let's say let's say there's a roof here and then you put a string and you put a, a, a stone you connect a stone you attach a stone to a to, to this is a string and on the string you put you put a stone or a mass or a bob or whatever it's going to be mass doesn't have to mass doesn't move why is it that the mass doesn't move because there is a force that is keeping it in place there's a force that is keeping it in place that force that is keeping it in place is a force of attraction i'm sorry is a force of attraction so now this this okay let me put let, let me put the forces so you see what is going on this mass is attached to the roof but it's inside the earth's gravitational field so obviously this this stone here will have what will have its weight so why is it that it's, it's not being pulled downwards why is it not not falling to the ground why is it not falling to the ground it's because of this force of attachment inside the string inside the string there will be a force of attachment that force of attachment faces upwards it faces upwards to cancel this this force to cancel out the weight force otherwise if it doesn't cancel out the weight force it's going to fall this this stone is going to fall but it doesn't fall because of this cancellation can this force of of attachment that is cancelling it out the force of attachment inside the string is called tension usually represented by a letter by the letter t this tension is will be in will be in the string itself um let's see for, the, for this for this for, for, for this tension to to work to to, 100%, to, to be at hundred percent capacity this string should be stretched out to its length this string should be stretched out to its length the tension cannot work when the string is not stretched out let's say the string is like this there will not be any tension but when the string is stretched out to its length like this when it's stout then there is tension inside the string that neutralizes what that neutralizes the weight of the stone tension always acts always always acts and the what uh, it, it always acts along along the string tension cannot work in this direction it cannot work in this direction it always acts along along the string because it's a photo, force of attachment attachment due to the what due to the string so as just as uh, it's just a recap the the things that we need to to keep in mind as we go forward uh, we are going to discuss this in the next video something called equilibrium but this brought out this the equilibrium was brought out by this point this tone does not move due to equilibrium equilibrium between the what the tension force and the weight force they are pulling in opposite directions but they're pulling at equal amounts that's why this stone remains stationary because they are in equilibrium if they're not in equilibrium one of them were going to win like a tug of war they were going to win we're going to discuss more of that in the next video so stay tuned for that one